for this problem, you have two particles moving along the x-axis, that means left to right, on the interval 0 to 6, they don't tell you what time frame that is, um, position of particle P at any time is given by this function, and position of particle R is given by this function, so you have a trig and a nice polynomial. Uh, this is non-calculator, so you can't use a calculator, so you're probably going to have to do some derivatives with these, but they're easier functions. Um, question A. Um, on this time interval, again, we don't know what units it is, but you don't have to worry about it. Find all times in which t, during which the particle r is moving to the right. So do we care about p? No. Yeah. No. All we care about is r. So we're dealing with this function right here. I want to know when it's moving to the right. To tell which direction something's moving, you have to deal with velocity. If your velocity is positive, it's going to the right. If your velocity is negative, it's going to the left, like on a number line. So we're looking for, if we're going to the right, are we looking for a velocity being positive? Now, if I want to know if it's positive, don't you first want to find out where it's zero, because that tells you where it changes from positive to negative. So if you look here at the answer, do you first see how they first take the derivative? Isn't that an easy derivative? <laughs> it's like, whew, that was a nice one. I like those. Um, then they factored it, and they solved it. They set it equal to zero. So they set this, see, r prime, which is right there, equal to zero, and got one and three. So those 1 and 3 are your times where it's 0. And then it looks what, what I would do is I'd make a little chart and look at it, okay, my intervals, and I go from 0 to 1. I plug a number between 0 and 1, probably half. I plug a number between 3 and 6. I plug a number between 1 and 3. Okay, so you put a number, and you put it into what function? You put it into the derivative. Not the original. I don't care about position. Aren't I looking where my velocity is positive, to the right? Okay, so when I put a number in between 0 and 1, probably put a half, when you plug it into this function, or this, does it matter which of these? No. no. So whichever one makes you happier to plug it into. So when you plug in a half, it looks like greater than 0 means positive. So it's saying for both these, when you plug a number in both of these intervals, it's positive. Velocity. Okay where this is a negative velocity. And the question is asking where it goes to the right, so are you okay with the answer? It's moving to the right on these two, where the velocity, or the derivative, is positive. This is the kind of work you want to show on the AP test. You want to show the setup. You want to show where you got these numbers. Okay, you want to show in the in answer your question. Here's your points. You get a point for the derivative, that's pretty pathetic. <laughs> Just for the derivative, yay, you got a point. And the answer. I thought there'd be more points here. I thought the work in between um, would be useful. But it doesn't say to justify, so maybe you would be okay not showing this middle work. Maybe they'd be fine with that. I'm not sure. But you want to show some work because you, you want to make sure what the, that you show enough work, basically. All right, for B, same interval, function, two particles travel in opposite directions. So if we want to know that the two particles travel in opposite directions, well, didn't we already do directions for R? So now don't we just have to look at the other one for P? All right. So we got to look at P. I, can I see? Okay, there we go. Okay, so what they did here, they first took the derivative of this function. And then if you solve this, you try to find where this equals 0. Can you ignore these numbers in front when you're setting it equal to 0? And aren't we dealing with just a simple interval from 0 to 6? Would that help? Is that 0 to 2 pi, basically? Can you follow that? If you want to think of it that way. Anyways, when you plug in numbers, they get at t equals 0 and t equals 4. Which, okay, if you plug those in, 0 and 4 would create a 0. And then can you see here for these two explanations, for this interval, it's less than 0 when you plug a value in for this one. It looks like it's greater than zero. Okay, I know you guys can't see it, but it's, it's, it's showing. Now, from there, you look at this one, right? That's R. Aren't those the intervals for R? Isn't this intervals for P? Can you compare the two and see where they're going in opposite directions? If you made a number line, could you, hopefully you can see that you could compare the two. So watch. I'm going to pull this thing up. 
when we look at this and I compare the two, all right, here's the answer. Now, they said opposite directions from 0 to 1. So, um, from 0 to 4, isn't it going the negative direction? Yeah. From 0 to 1, isn't it going the positive direction? So, wouldn't that be true that you're going opposite directions for that part of it? From 3 to 4, well, from 3 to 6, aren't you going in the positive direction? And from 3 to 4, aren't you going in the negative direction? You just got to do some comparisons. All right. Could you technically make a number line for both and go from 0 to 6 and make a chart here for each one and see where the overlaps are? Like the top one, I go 1, 3. So I go 1, 3, 6, and 0. The bottom one is just a 4, right? And the bottom one is negative for this and positive for this, correct? And the other one goes positive, negative, positive. Can you see from the charts, aren't the opposite direction right here? They're the same right here. Aren't they the opposite for this little interval? And the same right here? You like this chart? Yeah. That's what I would do. I think it's the best altogether. You guys, this number C is quite a bit more tricky. Find the acceleration of the particle at time 3. So don't miss that question. If you miss that, I want to slap you. Okay, because that's easy. Acceleration at time 3, that's easy. Just do P, plug in 3, that's easy. Now the second part's a little bit harder. Okay, is a particle P speeding up or slowing down or neither at 3? Explain your reasoning. So the point for this, this and the reasoning, is a little bit harder so at least get the first part, because you'll get your point for the acceleration. Got it? So let's talk about this. I want to know about speeding up and slowing down. It's kind of tricky, so watch what happens here. All right, I'm going to pull this up. So, here we go. There's your first derivative. Yay. Got my acceleration at time three. Got it? You got this funky-looking answer? All right, great. You know that value? Now, why do they have this greater than zero? Because you want to know if it's positive or negative. So the acceleration at time three is, what is that saying? Positive, greater than zero. There's your funky number, which you probably don't know the value of that without some major thinking about it, because there's a square root and pi's, and it's kind of ugly. But you can't tell it's positive. Now, why do they care anything about your velocity being negative? Well, that's part of the second question. All right, if my, are you okay your velocity at time three is negative due to problems A and B? See right here? Don't they tell you that your velocity is on that, um, at three, isn't it negative from this? So why is, why is it slowing down? Well, it doesn't, when your acceleration is positive, doesn't mean that you're increasing speed? Well, yeah, it would be if your function at that interval was going, was above the x-axis. This is where it's tricky. All right. When you said the word speeding up, speeding up, speeding is the absolute value of velocity. You don't care about direction. So what you have to worry about is you have to take the absolute value of the function. Since your speed is the absolute value of velocity, your velocity here is negative, which means the value is below the x-axis. So it's going to be the opposite of whatever this is. If that was a positive speed, you'd be speeding up. Okay, if that was a positive speed, you're speeding up because you wouldn't flip anything. But since it's a negative speed, you're going to do the opposite of what this says. Let me give you a quick little visual for that. This is not the function. But what if the function looked like that? For speed, what you do is you flip the function over right there. All right? And what it's saying is at time 3, there's my velocity function. Okay, it was negative. So what's the slope at that point? Well, isn't it that? But when you do speed, don't you flip that point over and go up here. Now is it doing the opposite of it? For speed, don't you flip the graph and now I have the upper graph. So what was a negative slope, because slope of velocity is acceleration, what was a negative slope here is now a positive slope. So it was a 
decreasing is now an increasing. Okay, so it's the opposite of that. It's kind of tricky, kind of weird. You just got to get used to it. This graph does not represent this. Do not think this is the graph for this. I'm just showing you with this speed absolute value issue. So that is why you're slowing down. This is not slowing down. This is actually speeding up speed because do you understand right here? You're speeding, you're slowing down. If this is the speed function, right here, you're just speeding up. Right here, you're slowing down. Write, but do not evaluate an expression for the average distance between the two particles. On this interval, be careful. They threw a different interval on you. Some of you would miss it because you don't look at the interval. Average distance. So... So average distance is also the key average distance between the two. So be careful, it's distance, not um, uh, rates, position, not rates. But isn't this your position formula? So isn't that our formula right here? Position, isn't the function positions? So distance is, we're dealing with these formulas. Just be careful with whether it's average distance between the two particles. So watch this. with this particular situation. Do you understand the distance between the two particles is just the function minus the other function? Okay, it's one function minus the other. And then isn't the interval zero to one? Isn't from one to three, thank you, one to three, and one over two because what's three minus one? Two, so this is average. Now why are there absolute values? Total distance is the absolute value of it. Got it? Total distance is absolute value. So you want the absolute value because it's total distance. So absolute value it. You subtract the two. You also just want the positive. Because isn't distance positive? So if you got a negative there, wouldn't that kind of be messed up? You want the positive of it. Now here's a visual of it. If you had this, and at some point, what if I got a snapshot? If one particle is there and one particle is there, don't you just say this is negative one, say this is five. What's the distance? Six. Isn't just five minus negative one? Absolute value to give you the positive value of distance. Distance is positive. If you plug in another number, they might be different points. So depending on where your points are, you just subtract the two. Absolute value because you want a positive value, the interval, and you're averaging it. Don't forget DT because you're dealing in terms of time. Don't put X.